this disease. Come on, turkey, let go. Mike, take a look at this. You never would have known. This was last week's episode of ABC's comedy hit, Spin City. Nothing in Michael J. Fox's performance would tell you that he had any illness. He was as energetic as ever. You know what, sir? I just feel like I've been in God's pocket for so long that I just didn't think that I was going to be hammered with this, that, 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 that I would find a way to, to, to live with it, to learn from it, to, to deal with it, and, and I have. We first met Michael J. Fox on the 80s TV sitcom, Family Ties. Then came the enormous success of Back to the Future. Oh, an absolute dream. His boyish good looks and physical comedy made him a box office star and a rich young man. To many, Fox never looked old enough to marry, but he did 10 years ago to actress Tracy Pollan. Not much. They have three children, a son and twin daughters. While he continued to make films, few knew about his condition. Two years ago, he returned to TV as the executive producer and star of Spin City. Then last week came the stunning news that the actor had Parkinson's. The actor Michael J. Fox told People magazine that he is battling Parkinson's disease. Michael, all this week we have been reading and hearing that you have this devastating disease, that it is life-threatening, that you are in the fight for your life. Is this the way you feel? It's, it's, it, no, it doesn't represent the way I feel, but um, uh, it's, it's been an interesting few days. Um, the, the first thing that I felt was that I was really moved that, that people uh, uh, cared and expressed that emotion and got in touch with me, and, and uh, I, I don't mean to diminish that at all. Um, but on some levels of the media, the, the, the breathlessness of it and, the, and the, the tragedy of it and the drama of it and the melodrama of it, it certainly didn't apply to me. I mean, I felt very apart from it. You don't consider this a tragedy? Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's my life. It's my life, and it's my life is so filled with positives and so filled with blessings and so filled with things that, that I wouldn't trade for anything in the world. You work a full schedule? Yeah, absolutely. You can still do athletics? I ski, I ride horses, I hike. Oh, man, pretty active. There are other young people who do have Parkinson's. It's rare to get it as young as you did at 30, but there are people who do. Are you concerned, perhaps, that, that they won't want to say anything because they see that the reaction to, to your uh, telling about your case? I saw a quote from a man who's well into his 80s and has Parkinson's, and, and it was quoted as saying yeah, about me, uh, when I look into that young man's eyes, I see such fear of the future and such foreboding and dread. And, and, you know, Tracy and I kind of thought, well, maybe it was gas. I don't know what he saw, but that, that's just not what I feel. And that's, and that projection, I think, again, is, is, could be harmful to, to other young people that, that have this condition. Many people associate Parkinson's disease with Muhammad Ali, whose slurred speech and uncontrollable shaking represents a severe form of the disorder. Others, like Attorney General Janet Reno and singer Johnny Cash, are, like Fox, in the milder stages. The symptoms vary from mild tremors and stiffness to large flailing movements and rigidity. The disease is progressive, and the symptoms grow worse over time. As I look at you, there are absolutely no symptoms. Right. I mean, you did not have to publicly say that you had Parkinson's disease. Right. Why did you? Why have you now told people about this disease? I would say the first reason is that it's been such a part of my life for a long time. And I wanted to just chart my own path and live one day at a time. And so I, I kept it to myself. The other part of it was also wanting to, to destigmatize it in a way and, and to just say, you know, yes, yeah, someone you know is, is, is dealing with this. And dealing with it is the oper operative word. I found myself at seven years not battling it, not struggling with it, not suffering from it, not breaking under the burden of it, but dealing with it. And, and then the tiniest element would be that I knew that somewhere, sometime, possibly someone who I didn't want to tell everybody on my behalf would beat me to the punch. A tabloid might make Somebody like that. Do something so, that. So I thought, let me do it on my terms, and I feel great about my family, and I feel great about the show. And I thought, this is a good time to do it. And I have to say, in fairness, that We've had indications, um, going back as far as a year, that there, there, 
the tabloids have known elements of it and have for one reason or another not printed it. It may be out of fear of litigation, it may be other things, but I have to say thank you. You know, thank you for not doing it. I seriously mean that. This may be the first time that an actor has thanked a tabloid. Do you feel relieved now? Yeah, but there's weird aspects to it. Um, I was looking, surfing uh, the channels at night. It is nothing short of a bombshell. After and uh, I stumbled on uh, this retrospective of my career. And, uh, and it was a strange feeling. It's like if you ever wonder what it was like to see your obit, you know, like no, none of us will ever get to read our obit. I, in a way, kind of got to. And, uh, <laughs> and it was strange, but also didn't, didn't freak me out. It, it, I, I feel more at ease all the time because it, it's, uh, it's mine, you know? It's my life and it's my, it's my reality. No one knows what causes Parkinson's. Some believe it comes from head injuries or drug abuse or family history. According to Fox, none of these factors apply to him. One of the things that's ironic, Michael, is that you are always perceived as being so boyish. I mean, that, that's part of what you are, you know. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, God has God a sense of humor. God definitely has a sense of humor. That they would give you a disease that most often affects people over 60. Right. Let's go back to the beginning. When did you first have symptoms of this disease, and what were they? It was actually in the fall of 90. Okay, Mr. Tipper. I was doing a movie called Doc Hollywood what in Florida. The hell and I just woke up one morning, and my pinky was just doing that. And I thought, well, that's weird. And, uh, and it wouldn't stop uh, for a day or so. So I went, to, I saw a neurologist, and I said, well, what could that be? And he said, you know, he gave me a few tests. He said, well, at your age, you know, he said, there's nothing neurological that I can imagine it would be. He said, you probably whacked your elbow. So I went to a sports therapist, and he worked on it for a while and then sent me to a neurologist, and that was when the neurologist uh, gave me some tests and said that, that it, was, it was Parkinson's. What did you think? You're 30 years old, and the doctor says you have Parkinson's. I, I, I was shocked, and it, it, it frightened me. What was the prognosis seven years ago? Well, it was mixed, and it was also heard through the filter of disbelief. Yeah, I sat down in the chair, and he said, you have Parkinson's, but you'll be able to work for years and years. So everything after Parkinson's, he could have said, you know, but you're three-toed Martian, and you eat squirrels. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I don't know what he said. You know, I was still back in Parkinson's. I went for second opinion, third opinion, fourth opinion, but it, I, I knew. And what did you say to yourself? I said, you know, I said, this is going to be an interesting journey. This is not going to be boring. But I never had a moment where I fell to my knees and said, you know, oh, God, this is horrible. You know, why hast thou forsaken me? What is this? I never had that moment. What I had was, wow, OK, that's not what I was expecting. You don't dwell on this, do you? It's pointless to dwell on it. It's absolutely pointless to dwell on it. It's like worrying about what the weather's going to be like tomorrow. Open and close your hands. Approximately a million and a half Americans suffer from Parkinson's. Five to 10% are under 40. Many, like Fox, take a daily medication called Cinemet. Fox took the drug shortly before our interview. It usually works within an hour. Well, Cinemet stops your symptoms. Right. And the symptoms are primarily what? It used to be a pretty dramatic tremor on my left side, and by Dramatic, I mean... Uh, Show me, if you could, what it used to be. Well, like. it, would be, it would be like someone waving. Or it would be, be big. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the or the, or like metaphor. this? Yeah, like that. There must have been drawbacks to this disease, though. I mean, since you take medication and it doesn't last, how long does it last? Oh, it's not a party. Uh, yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. yeah it, you know, it can last two hours, three hours. It can last one hour. It can last four hours. Well, what if somebody said, we want you to emcee a dinner, and you know the dinner's going to last... I don't know, two, three, four hours. I wouldn't do it. So you had to give an excuse? Yeah. People magazine wrote about one night when you were going to get a Golden Globe Award and you were so stiff or rigid you couldn't get out of the car. If you're walking into the Golden Globes, I guarantee you at any given moment, 150 to 200 people are looking at you. So that the pressure of that moment, if I, if I was feeling symptomatic, which I was, and my arm was, was tremoring and my, my leg was tremoring, and uh, I didn't want to get out and walk through that gauntlet. So I, you know, I said to the guy, you know, let's go around the block, let's go around the block. So he, I don't know what he thought was going on back there, but he, I, Tracy was massaging my shoulder, maybe he thought, you know, have a little fun on the way to the Golden Globes, I have no idea. You made, in this last seven years, film after film. Right. No one noticed. 
You did stunts, you ran, you jumped, you this, you I that. I still do. And, and you still do. No one noticed. How did they not know? Um, I didn't want them to. <laughs> I didn't want them to. And they didn't. When we come back, you'll hear a festival season. I'm the deputy mayor of the world! Did you decide to do television in part because of this disease? Oh, yeah. I wanted to be with my family more. I wanted to have, a, uh, have as nine to five a job as I could have. Still, on the set of Spin City, there were times when Fox kept the cast and crew waiting while his medication took effect. The crew had no idea why they were delayed. And when the cameras did roll, Fox could find ways to hide his minor tremors. You've said that there were all kinds of tricks that you can do that, that keep the arm from tremoring or the rigidity. Like what? I'm not going to show you too many, but, but, but someone who, who has a Parkinsonian tremor um, sometimes if the hand is involved, mm -hmm. it will stop. So, so you just involve the hand for a few minutes and then uninvolve it and then re-involve it and put it down and then pick something up. So... Or you'd move? Or you'd move, shift your position. But the one symptom that I had that was, that was most problematic for me was this tremor in my left arm and that, that picked up steam and, and, and got bigger out of, out of, uh, uh, so what I'm looking for, it was, it was not in scale with the rest of, of my progression. Very serious? Well, I mean, serious in that it's like a dog that, you know, pees on your rug. I mean, it, You can't it, avoid it. Yeah, it's just, it's just annoying, yeah. Last spring, you had brain surgery. Right. First of all, how do you keep it secret? There are some things in all of our lives, depending on no matter what we do, that we just keep to ourselves, you know. What I'm getting at is that for an actor as famous as you are, doing a series that's on every week, to take off and have brain surgery and no one knows is in itself a major feat. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> at this hospital outside Boston, Fox underwent a procedure similar to this one. The success rate is very high for this operation, but there was a 5% chance that he could be paralyzed or die. Michael, there was a risk. I mean, you, you could have died, you, you could have been paralyzed. Were you scared? I have full faith in my doctors, and I have full faith in, in God. What is this uh, operation called? A thalamotomy. A thalamotomy is a procedure where they drill a hole on top of your head. They put you in a, a kind of this brace and sit in a lazy boy, basically. And you've got just a, just a little kind of happy, valiumy thing happening, but you're, but you're awake and you're, you're responsive. And then they insert a... This, this kind of tube into this hole in the top of your head and into your brain. With computer mapping, the probe finds and destroys malfunctioning nerve cells which cause Fox's tremors. You are conscious, you're sedated, but you know what's going on. Yeah, oh yeah, and talking to them. And at one point, my doctor, Dr. Bruce Cook, is just a terrific surgeon. Um, brain surgeons are interesting because there's no margin for error. There's no margin for error. You can't leave the sponge in there. So. Um, as he was in there and he was doing something, at one point he, he touched something and, he, and I was giving him an answer and I said, I said, yeah, well, I think I view... And then I, and I kind of wound up again and I said, wow, you, you're in my brain, man. This is really wild. You're in my brain. And then he said, make, can you make your arm tremor now? And uh, so I said, okay. And I tried and, 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 and I couldn't. And so I'm getting mad at myself. Think, you know, don't be a jerk. You know, the guy wants you to make your arm move, man, make it move. And I couldn't make it move. And I said, so I'm sorry, Dr. Cook, I can't do it. And he went, good, we're done. It's a wrap. He stopped the tremor. That was it, yeah. Did the surgery stop almost all of the symptoms? No, it doesn't. It stops the big tremor. Yeah, the big tremor on, the, on, the, on that left side. So you, get, you still have residual small tremors in the way that, uh, that, that may or may not progress. You, you don't know, you know. Michael, are you at all concerned that now audiences will look at you differently? It was a thought. Hey, hey, somebody stop that! But I, I feel good about what I do, and I have pretty, I'm pretty confident that people are going to watch it and laugh and just be into watching the show. It must be a relief now, though, that everyone on the show does know. Yeah. Well, yeah. You are in the middle now of a five-year contract with yeah. Spin City. Do you see yourself yeah. staying on and on and on? Absolutely. I plan on carrying on for, I'd love to go for seven years. I mean, seven is my lucky number.
What's your prognosis today? There's nothing finite that anyone can ever say, but what my doctors do agree uh, on is that I'll be able to, to work and function for many more years to come. In terms of uh, uh, an end prognosis, I mean, Parkinson's leads to a logical conclusion. I mean, there's no getting around that. You, you know, Parkinson's goes where Parkinson's goes. As our conversation came to a close, we asked Michael's wife, Tracy Pollan, to join us. When you first heard that Michael had the disease, were you devastated? No, I wouldn't say that I was devastated. I was very shocked and surprised. And You know, it's funny. I am, you know, you hear Michael speaking, and he's just the ultimate optimist, and he always has been, and he's the complete opposite from you. me. But it's hard to worry when you live with Michael because he's such not a worrier, and he looks at you like you're a bug if you, you know, it's sort of like... I, he's really taught me to live in the present. A great deal of my optimism um, comes from Tracy be, because because she she means so much to me and she she helps me in so many ways and fills in the blanks in so many ways. And when I think of that moment when I told her, and she didn't panic, she didn't draw back you know there's just that moment when you know and you just go you are in this with me for the long haul aren't you and i could just tell immediately that she was and then it was like okay we'll deal with it and it led me on a on a on a really terrific journey of really looking at things and i would not be as happy a person today uh were it not for this journey that i've been on there are so many uh things on the horizon so many uh medications and surgical procedures um I really feel that within the next 10 years, they're going to find a way to flick a switch and this is gone. Maybe one of the reasons I'm more optimistic and happier and more relaxed than people would expect me to be is I don't, won't see 50 with this. I will see 50, but I will not have this. You think by the, you're 37 now, by the time you're 50, I know, be I won't have this. I will not have it.